welcome back to episode three of my Red Sea scuba diving trip. If you missed episode one and two, I'll leave a link to them in the description below, so feel free to go and check those out. In this episode, you'll see some of the best corals and the best reefs we've seen across the whole trip. I hope you enjoy. We stepped foot on our boat, the Alarm and Saw, for the very last time and it was a short trip over to our first dive site, Rascamilla. At this site, you're mainly looking at those big brain and fan corals that are scattered throughout. There's no real need to go below 15 or 16 meters on this one. We got very, very lucky with the visibility on this day's diving. It was easily 40 plus meters. It was just coral and fish as far as the eye could see. It was great. I absolutely love seeing the puffer fish on the dives, especially when they're resting like this one. It means you can get a really close look at them. They're really, really cute. They're almost like the puppies of the Red Sea. This one was literally spinning in excitement to see us. Just look at that visibility. Absolutely incredible. Does anyone know what this seaweed looking stuff is on top of the coral? Our dive guide asked us to get some photos and footage of it so we can analyse it. Apparently it's been rapidly increasing since he's been diving in the Red Sea. There were some absolutely giant purple corals on this dive. Easily about 2 metres wide and 2 metres long, they were absolutely huge. I noticed that these purple corals stood out a lot. They're quite a dark colour and when you compare it to the rest of the reef which are kind of bright yellows and whites and even some reds, you notice that they really really do stand out just because of how dark they are. On this bit of the dive we start seeing some of those giant yellow fan corals. They were unbelievably big. I'm a pretty tall guy about 6 foot 1 and they were easily towering over me. Didn't see too much of the bigger life on this dive, it was just about appreciating those absolutely huge corals. We did get to see a couple of these blue trigger fish though. With how good the visibility was, you can see just how many fan corals there were. They came in all different shapes and sizes, some were bigger and some were smaller, but it was amazing to see. This reef was definitely thriving. The yellows on these corals really stand out. You can see why they get the name table corals and you could easily pull up about 10 or 15 chairs around this one. These were easily two of the biggest fan corals we saw on the dive. Probably over two meters tall and two meters wide. Just unbelievable. And they're so thin and fragile, it's amazing how they stay up. And that was it from Rascamilla. In terms of corals, it was probably the most impressive dive we did on the whole trip. There were so many different species and sizes. Genuinely, if you get to do this dive, I'd recommend it. After about an hour surface interval and a bit of lunch next to this really cool wreck, it was time to go on to our next dive, which was Thomas Reef. Thomas Reef was centered around an island and you could go really deep on this one, easily over 35 meters. There was lots of fan corals around, as well as anemones with clownfish. We started off the dive with a lionfish. I think I said in the last episode that there weren't too many on the reefs themselves, so it was really cool to see one. Mm -hmm. 
There were some more of those really tall, fragile fan corals. This one was easily the tallest one we saw on the entire trip. Thousands of these Red Sea Fusiliers were dashing around us the entire dive too. We saw a few of these fish throughout the trip, but we didn't get too much chance to film them as often they'd swim away. I think it's some sort of grouper. This was the first of the anemones and clownfish we saw on this dive. I don't know if you can notice, but on the right hand side of the screen, there's a really tiny little black clownfish as well. This was the second pair of clownfish we saw, and this one fish got really far away from the anemone. This was clearly some sort of aggressive, defensive behaviour. We were doing the right thing, and when it approached us, we got further and further back, but it just kept following us. At this point, it had come about two and a half, three metres away from the anemone. It just sort of shows the lengths they'll go to to protect themselves. Usually when we saw these fish, they were hiding in little caves, little nooks and crannies, somewhere dark. They have absolutely huge eyes. It was always a treat when we got to see butterfly fish. I loved watching how these two species interacted with each other. They were sort of swimming between each other, but still staying in their pairs. It was really cool to watch. Some more of those giant fan corals now. You can see how they'd be perfect hiding places for some smaller fish. In other parts of the world, you'd be really annoyed to see a lionfish. They're incredibly invasive in most parts. However, they are native to the Red Sea, so it is actually cool to see them. I love how wide and far they can spread their fins out. It's almost like what a peacock does. I notice they don't swim very far or very fast. Usually they'll go two or three meters and then sit on a piece of coral, probably waiting for some prey to come past. And do you see the little bits that are sticking out just above its head with the black dots on it? I think they're decoy eyes. With the colors on them, they're incredibly well camouflaged and perfect little predators. Just look at how many of these fusiliers were swimming around us. They were there the whole dive, swimming really fast, kind of looping us. I think there must have been some sort of predator, maybe a tuna lurking in the depths. And that was it from this day's diving and from our boat, the Alarm Ansaw. The next day, we boarded a much larger boat to go and dive the wreck of the SS Thistlegorm. That video is already live on the channel, so if you want to take a look, I'll leave a link in the description as well as at the top of the screen. But after we dived the SS Thistlegorm, there was one more reef dive on Shark and Yolanda Reef. We had already dived Shark and Yolanda in the very first episode, this time we took a slightly different path, just to see a bit more of the reef. We also decided to stick to the deeper blue side of the dive site, so we had a chance of seeing some of those larger animals that we hadn't seen yet. There was a lot of these giant trevelli about. I think these were some sort of tuna lurking far in the distance. This was the very last dive from the entire trip. It was really cool to see all those corals and all those fish one last time. I'll be honest, I have no idea what this is, but I found it really, really fascinating watching it move. Our dive guide took the GoPro and filmed a little bit of footage and also got some video of us swimming along. The purple corals on this dive were a lot brighter than the ones you saw earlier in the episode. I've no idea why, maybe it was just better lighting. I guess they could also just be completely different species of coral, I've no idea. About five meters below us, we spotted this giant Napoleon fish. 
Unfortunately, we couldn't get closer as we were already at the limit of what we were allowed to dive, but it was easily about a metre and a half long. The camera really doesn't do justice as to how big this fish was. A few more of those really long barracuda lurking at the surface. I really loved watching the giant Trevelli swim by. They swim with pretty much zero effort as well as zero expression on their face. And that was it, the final dive on Shark and Yolanda was done. So that's it from my Red Sea scuba diving trip. It was an incredible experience. Like I said in episode one, it was my first time diving outside of the UK. So it was just amazing to see the things that you only think you'll see on TV. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like. It really helps us out. Comment what you thought of the series and have you been to the Red Sea before to scuba dive? What did you see? Let us know down below. Subscribe to Naturescope to not miss any more future diving content. From this Red Sea trip, I've got one more bonus video coming up, which is a snorkeling video and we captured some incredible footage considering we didn't go down below the water. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.